Welcome back to this One Health Summer School. My name is Tina Hell, and I'm a senior researcher at the National Food Institute at the Technical University of Denmark. This is the first lecture of the Module 3 e-learning part. And I will give you an introduction to what you will experience for the next week. Uh, I've called the um, presentation or the lecture Source Tracking and Introduction. You may remember this from module one, where we asked these four One Health questions. During this uh, module here, we will address two of them, namely number one and two, how big is the burden and what causes the disease, also illustrated here. So this is what this module will um, be focused on. In order to uh, answer question number one, how big is the burden, we have two methods that we use, the burden of illness and the burden of disease. The burden of illness is trying to estimate the true number of illnesses in a given population of a given disease. Whereas burden of disease take this estimate of the true number of illness, but also focus on estimating the public health burden considering mortality, severity, duration and complication of such a disease. This is, of course, very uh, varied between the different diseases and not easily comparable if you just look at individual numbers. So therefore, there has been a common effort to develop a metric that try to um, summarize all these things in one metric. And it is called the Disability Adjusted Life Year, short, the DALIS. And you will, through this e-learning uh, part, learn how to calculate values. Again, you remember probably this surveillance pyramid where we have the reported number of cases at the top of the pyramid and further down in the base, we have the true incidence. But one thing is to actually estimate the true incidence. But even if we're able to do that, we will still be stuck with the question, for instance, what is more important? 100 cases of a mild self-limiting gastroenteritis of a certain pathogen, it could be, for instance, norovirus, or 20 cases of a very severe illness resulting in hospitalization, li lifelong complication, or maybe even death. This is some of the questions that risk managers and politicians are faced with, and resources are limited, so they need to prioritize, and how do they do that? And this is and this is where the DALIs come into question. This is why we need DALIs to be able to compare across diseases so the politician will have a measure that they can use in their prioritization. Okay, so um, next question, the question two, what causes the problem? Here we often divide, uh, divide methods into uh, methods that address um, sporadic cases. There, was, there will be cases in the general population that are not linked to outbreaks and then cases that are linked to foodborne outbreaks. Social attribution are, measured, uh, are used to um, apply to the general population and it, they estimate the contribution from different sources and uh, transmission pathway. And there we use a mixture of microbial subtyping approaches and epidemiological approaches. And you will learn uh, about them further on in this uh, week. For outbreak investigation, we also use a combination of microbial subtyping techniques, epidemiological analytical methods, and tracing approaches. <clears throat> in, it can be said in a popular manner that source tracking, there are three ways of t attacking this problem. You can ask the pathogen, you can ask the food, or you can ask the patient. Often you will use the microbiological method to ask the pathogen, the tracing approach to ask the food, and then you will use epidemiological methods to ask the patients. Of course, when should you choose what? And there are some important issues that you need to consider. First of all, if you have a pathogen, you need to know is it actually known. Sometimes you can have an outbreak uh, of human infections, but you will not know what the pathogen is. Obviously, you cannot use microbial subtyping techniques then. Sometimes it can also be a difficulty to isolate and identify the pathogen, particularly from food, and then you might also want to use another approach. And finally, you need to consider the clonal structure of the pathogen, um, and all this will be explained more carefully in uh, lecture two of, of this e-learning part. 
About the human cases, you need to consider whether these are sporadic on the general population or whether they are related to outbreaks of disease. And you need to consider case characteristics like uh, age, gender, geography, food consumption patterns, and so on. And when we talk about uh, food, we need to consider where in the chain the problem was intensified, what are the ingredients of the food, what are the distribution pathway, all things we need to know to trace the food uh, to the original source, or the other way around, trace the food uh, to the exposed population. The role of typing for source tracking, um, well, first of all, there's methods to isolate and uh, identify the species that we talk about. Uh, this is not really something we use for source tracking, it's just to, give us, uh, to, to let us know what the uh, species are. But then for subtyping there are several methods, and we divide them into phenotypic methods and molecular methods. The phenotypic methods include serotyping, fats typing, and antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Um, and they have been used for many, many years uh, to sub-characterize uh, pathogens. Um, molecular typing, uh, some of these, uh, the DNA banding methods, the fingerprinting methods, had also been used for quite many years. Uh, and they include, for instance, pulse field gel electrophoresis or PFG. Then there is a new generation of typing methods called sequencing techniques, where we have the multilocal sequence typing methods and the whole genome sequencing. They have not been used so much yet, uh, but they are believed to be the future. So we will also focus a lot on these methods in the second lecture uh, of this, uh, of this uh, module. But basically, uh, my point with this is that typing techniques are used to compare subtypes isolated from humans with subtypes isolated from animals and food. That is really the basic principle and that goes all along, no matter how we use the subtyping techniques. So finally, the role of tracing and the role of epidemiological method in source attribution. So here you have um, the tracing part where we want to trace food either forward down the production pathway or the other way backward. If we want to do it backwards, it's often if we have an outbreak, for instance, where we have a lot of consumers or people getting ill from a certain disease, and then we want to trace back to the original uh, primary producer. Sometimes we also like to trace forward. That is, for instance, if we find a critical pathogen in a batch of food, and that food has already to some extent been distributed, then we want to uh, track down the food where it has been distributed to and maybe also estimate uh, the size of the exposed population. So just to give you an overview of the lectures that we're going to do here in lecture uh, in module three, uh, I've just given you the introduction to source tracking. The second one will be on molecular typing methods. And then there, there will be an introduction to uh, epidemiologic, epidemiological analytical methods. And we will have a lecture on trace back, trace forward in the food production chain, a lecture on burden of illness and burden of disease studies, and finally, source attribution approaches where we will go through the concept definitions and methods. <laughs>